Howdy. 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 Too many chairs here. Too many chairs. Mics and mics and mics. <laughs> mics and mics and mics galore. Another mic. Doing pretty small places, small venues on this tour. What's that? Because um, we're not gigantic or anything. We're this big. I'm, I'm actually this big. He's this big. He's this big. We're doing a, <laughs> we're doing a um, Metallica Stadium tour in the summer, so you know we're just kind of warm up for that. And then now uh, we're doing. We just. Um, got off the Aussie tour. These guys opened up for Aussie in uh, the States, you know, doing arenas. And then uh, we're going back to do Lollapalooza Festival, outdoor big places and stuff like that. So it's just kind of a warm up, you know. Do you prefer clubs over the arena type of things? They're both cool in their own way. It's two different things. It's just a gig. Yeah. Yeah. What do you expect from this tour? Expect? A lot of hangovers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. We're just having fun. Uh, you know, we've only really been a band for about three weeks now with Mike. And it's doing really good. We feel, we feel really confident in how we're playing. And the show's been great. Kids have been coming out to see us play. So we've just been having a blast. Is the audience a lot different here than in the States? Wow, well, would you say so? Yes. Fairly similar yeah. to the States. Same same reaction. Kids get excited like they do in the States. The same thing. When, when did Mike start with his band? Well, he had to take a break for a while. We, we've been, Jesus, since we pretty much started, I think, we've been going nonstop. Uh, just all the things that we've done. And uh, it was just kind of time for him to take a break from touring at that point and uh, we wanted to keep going on so we had met Mike on the Aussie tour and thought he'd make a good choice even though we didn't like him as a person <laughs> <laughs> and uh, we asked him to come wow. play <laughs> ouch <laughs> and uh, asked him to come play with us and, and uh, we've been doing it so far so it's so, so far that it's gone really the, the best that it possibly could I guess you know Mike's in LA working on some stuff in his own right now He's doing really good. How are they going to do something with Ozzy? Uh, we just finished um, mix it. We just finished mixing a, <laughs> mixing a live um, uh, live record that's coming out. I think in uh, April or May, a double live record. And um, he, Q was also writing some new music and stuff like that. Ozzy's got a lot of things going right now, as, as we all do. So we're just kind of working together. If the timing's right, you know, we'll do, do both. But you know, right now I'm just with these guys. Drinking way too much here in Finland. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody have a cigarette? Hey, they're supposed to ask questions. Oh, yeah. Thanks a lot. I got one of my own. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. Yeah, well, thanks, bro. So, first, let's go. Already sold like half a million units, and uh, then Dirt debuted at number six on Billboard. Uh, did you accept, expect that kind of a success with your first? and second album in a way that uh, it seems to me that even with or without any Nirvana and Seattle boom, you would have broke through with this second album, but uh, did it surprise you as a band? Because you ain't like your average Yankee Doodle Dandy pop group. Yeah, I, I think it was a surprise to all of us. Um, we didn't know we were an average Yankee Doodle. Hippie zesty rock group, though. That's news to me. No, we're not one. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> well, I want to be known as that. You, I, I, we I know you as name to that. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I, I think maybe we expected to chart it maybe you know, 199 out of 200. <laughs> number six. And we were real pleased, man. You know. Nice surprise. Yeah, it was definitely cool. Yeah, those kind of things you really can't. You know, it's really kind of a waste of time to try to expect what's going to happen. You know, the people are either going to buy it or they're not. Sometimes it's really hard to tell what people like. Something you're totally sure somebody's going to dig, they'll hate it. <laughs> and the stuff that you, you know, that 
you just worry about what you like. It usually works out pretty good. And we're also on this uh, singles movie soundtrack with Wood, so uh, do you think that it sort of helps to promote the oh, yeah. coming album? Cool. What do you think about the movie? It's about to come to finish. Oh, it is. Um, Would you recommend it? Depends on what your taste in movies are. It's, it's kind of a sappy love story type thing. It's a good thing to take your girlfriend to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you have any acting parts in this film? No, we just played live. Have you changed a lot as human beings while doing this, or? Mm. <sighs> I don't. I don't think so. I think I shower just as infrequently as I used to. Right. Well, I thank you, oh, sir. Hello. The happy Brit. Mr. Oh, Kevin maybe, Wilkins. Maybe just in, in getting more bold or, or more... Uh, Confidence. Confident, just about... Uh, and, uh, and also, you know, um, knowing when to be polite and not to be polite. Well, not... In, not unpolite, but uh, you know, p people want a lot of your time, and, and sometimes you have to draw the line and say no. Um, a year ago, I probably couldn't have said no, but now I can't. I'm saying no right now. I'm leaving. I'm gonna take a shower. <laughs> <laughs> what has been the biggest surprise for you in the music business? So have there has there been any surprises? Oh yeah, the biggest surprise is that it's hard work. I was told there was no, supposed to be no work <laughs> well, There's a lot of things that are different line, than how you expect them to be. But uh, it's a lot of the, lot of the things are just, just like you expect them. So you know, you're just going to go through it one step at a time, one day at a time. And, <laughs> and you, just, you just, you know, learn, try to learn as much as you can and do, the, do it the best that you can. I watch a lot of one day at a time with Valerie Burton. Oh, yeah, that's right. That helps. Tomara appears on your album. It's called Death American Records and Slayer. How did you get involved with him? We toured with him on the Clash of the Titans uh, back in '91. Sold our souls to Satan. <laughs> <laughs> he collected. <laughs> Is he on DVD or something? What's that? Is he playing or singing? Oh, it's just, it's not even on a song. It's just kind of like uh, that kind of Iron Man segue into, uh, on the uh, second side. He just does all the screaming and stuff. That's, just, that's Tom screaming his ass off. He does it good. <laughs> he does it good. He's in the union. That's right. <laughs> it's the fact that you are from Seattle advantage or disadvantage nowadays? Depends on where you're at, I guess. <laughs> Sometimes it's a disadvantage, you know, from from the viewpoint of other people. But you know, be, before the big Seattle boom, we already had a record out and we're doing it all right. So I think that kind of saved us from you know being exploited with with everyone else. What do you think about you musicians who moved to Seattle and tried to be as I need to get a light. They're uh, not very bright. <laughs> not very smart people. <laughs> have you met any? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, I unfortunately I have. I tell them to move home. Go back. <laughs> I don't know. Anybody everybody's got the idea that they're gonna get get big or huge by moving someplace that's happening is pretty much doing it for the wrong reasons, I think, anyway, so just kinda of ruining the whole deal. Everybody from Seattle is going to move out to Idaho now. We're going to start another city out there. Goober, Idaho will be the new hotbed. <laughs> That's for right. Bands. It's right next to the nuclear waste dump. <laughs> Have you noticed are there already some bands who are influenced by you? Some. Maybe in a little way. Can you name some? No. Motley Crue. Just... <laughs> Judas <laughs> Priest. <laughs> I don't know any. I don't know. It's like I hear little things, bits and pieces, you know, and then again, it could be something, you know, that just sounds that way to me. Pe people, t uh, people will bring up names of bands that they think sound like us, and I'll listen to it, and I'll like, 
What are you talking about? I don't hear anything at all, so I don't know. I think we're too close to what we do, so it's kind of hard to be objective about it. Is it, is it true that someone of you used to play more like Los Angeles Blank or some stuff? No, but it's true that <laughs> I used to play Seattle Blank. I never played that. <laughs> <laughs> we played, I mean, you know, you, I've played in a ton of different bands. Yeah, you know? when you're a kid, you'd probably try everything. Yeah. I, used to, I used to do lip sync contests at junior high, you know. Stuff like that, you know. I mean, you just do what you do. What you do to have He's fun. He's a favorite at the local karaoke bar. You can see him the night after the show. That's right. I'll be on the corner singing. For singing me. the greatest love of all. That's right. The great. I can't get my lip to quiver quite as much as <laughs> with you, though. But, but I, I get my heart into it. You're a little light. Were you influenced by by such still bands as, as TKO or, or Q5? Yeah, sure. I, I used to listen to those bands and see them play. Sure. As well as, you know, Soundgarden and those bands too. You know, Skin Yard. Uh, Queen's Rike, you know, for that matter. Hendrix Heart. <laughs> I like a lot of stuff. Have you ever described your music alternative? And do you still do? Alternative? Um, I never really described our music as anything like with a title. Their titles are so bland, you know, it's like, you know, it's just, just a word, you know, it doesn't really mean anything. Spooky, spooky, spooky moves. Spooky moves in music. So what about this tour so far? You toured USA with Screaming Trees and now you're traveling around Europe with them, so how do you get along? Great. No, not so good. We couldn't get rid of them. They just kept following us around. No, they're, yeah, they're they're great guys. Um, that's why we we are touring together here because uh, we went so well in the states and we had a good time with them. So you toured states with them and uh, you also did major stadium gigs and now you got this sort of a smaller venue tour in Europe, but. Uh, you are like about to become like a stadium rockers in a way that uh, these clubs are big enough for your crowd. So, uh, uh, do you feel that uh, there's a risk of becoming sort of a, like a, uh, you know, uh, too like a, too big for yourselves in a way that? Uh, starts to effect on your music. Like some band like Guns N' Roses, they used to be sort of like a street sound, but now they're on their own sound world and they really don't know what's going on around them. Mm. So uh, do you think that there's a risk of becoming such a happening? I don't know, I mean, I, I, I see our growth a lot, a lot steadier than that and just like jump into something like that. I mean, there's no way we're ready to play stadiums on our own, you know. I don't think I think that the we would draw that many people anyway at this point. I mean we still got a lot a lot of work to do, you know. <coughs> um, in Europe right here, you know, I mean this is this is a we're still fairly fairly new, you know. We're still pretty new in the States, so it takes time to really build build a good following and be able to, to do both things, you know, I mean and you know, I'd never want to be in a be in a position where that's the only kind of places you could play. You know, it just would be no fun. You know, <laughs> a lot of things too is the gigs a gig, whether you play a big stage or a small stage. You know, it's it's pretty much the same thing. We're up there playing. The only drawback about opening for an, an act is you only get to play a half an hour, which and when we do this, we get to play two hours, and that's the best part of our day. It's the other 23 hours of bullshit that you got to deal with, you know, that really gets on your nerves. You know, that's the only release you get is when you get up there for the two hours. And that's the only drawback, I think, of playing stadiums, you know, if there is a drawback. To that. Well, I think, um, you know, the bigger you get, the more chaotic your life would become. And, and the more chaotic our lives become, the better our music gets. So <laughs> I think it might be a turn for the better, hopefully. <laughs> You've been labeled as an uh, example of this uh, alternative rock scene in the States. Uh, there was this interview on 
the Rolling Stone way. You were like the intellectual alternative rock band for the 90s. So how do you... What? What do you, what do you think of uh -huh. such a... So you give you sort of an intellectual aura that you are something new, sort of saviors of rock for the, for the 90s. Well, I think we may, may be a reflection of something old that got lost, you know, because, you know, rock and roll um, started that way. I mean, in, in the 70s, all of rock and roll was you know, pretty intelligent and, and, and uh, you know, had some substance. And that in the 80s, that kind of got lost. Bands, you know, just singing about fast cars and leather gloves and, and all that, you know. I think people maybe got tired of that, and we're not. I don't have a leather glove. And I don't have a girlfriend, so I can't write about those things. <laughs> <laughs> what about songwriting? Because uh, these songs are usually just that isn't like a band credited on them, or so. so is it like you know you do a song, make a song, and it's there. So it's like well, it goes like this. Or is like, you know, the ar arrangements are done in? We all arrange the songs together. I mean, one guy might have a pretty strong idea about what, what the song is and show it, you know, show it to the rest of the band. And, uh, and there's a lot of stuff that gets shit canned, you know, thrown away, but, or, or cut out, or whatever, you know. So we all, we all do a lot of, uh, a lot of things within, within the band to put the songs together. And there's also, a lot of space to write songs, you know, to bring in the material individually and stuff too. You know, um, you know when, when a song's credited, that Lane wrote, it's something that he came up with, an idea, and then we took it and made it, made it into something even a little, a little better, maybe, you know, as playing it together. Why did, did you have a lot of time to practice the songs? Uh, actually, I was. <laughs> we were in. Um, I was in Reno, Nevada. Uh, riding with Ozzy, uh, the, and I got on a plane from there, went to L.A., they went to Brazil, and then we met in London, and then we had uh, four rehearsals, well, five, if you include the hash day. That's right. I had five rehearsals, <laughs> five, five rehearsals, and then uh, we did the first show, and then on, you know, I said, hey, learn these 20 songs, we got a gig on Saturday, we'll see you in London, you know, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, it's a lot of fun. We have a good good time with these guys. I know uh, there's a lot of their songs already from the Ozzy tour. You know, I go and watch our set. They're one of the few acts that we, you know, the Ozzy band really liked. And you know, these guys are like our brothers. And this worked really good. And you know, the gel was really good. So we're still gelling here. And we're still rolling around in jello. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, though. Do you have some kind of a long-term plan? How do you want to develop your band, or do you just let it go as it is and on its own? We keep, we keep making the music, the, the, kind of the cool, you know, I mean, the stuff that we're coming up with. You know, that's the whole deal about us, kind of, it's like, uh, not a whole lot of thought <laughs> involved. Mm -hmm. Just kind of feeling out what whatever feels right, you know. And uh, so we're really looking forward to moving on to the next phase of making another album, you know, writing with Mike and stuff, and and uh, just seeing where we're going to go. You know, I don't even think we know yet. But it, It'll be an interesting place, I'm sure. He's had the liver cancer ward. <laughs> <laughs> Probably after the end of this leg. <laughs> Wayne, tell us about you, how, about how you brought your foot. Uh, <laughs> oh, man. That was good. Um, <laughs> a, a train ran over it? No. It's a better story than the real one. Uh, I was riding a three-wheel all-terrain vehicle. Or is it Oklahoma State Fair? Yeah. <laughs> Oklahoma. <laughs> and uh, um, the production manager on the tour saw, saw me riding out, out his window and radioed to the crew members, some of the crew, to uh, stop me. So they were all waving their arms in front of me and I was going full speed, no brakes. <clears throat> I turned and was either going to run into a truck and break my neck or Try and jump off, and the bike ran over my foot. <laughs> <laughs> Ozzy, Ozzy was watching from the from his dressing room window when Lane ate it, and he uh, he said that's a, one of the most funniest things he's ever seen in his life. <laughs> this guy breaking his foot on the ATC is hilarious. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Uh, 
But you did, did the tour anyway. Yeah. With broken legs, so on. <laughs> how did it affect on your stage appearance? Well, before I broke my foot, I never moved from the center of the stage. And once I broke it, I, I felt, you know, I was disabled, so uh, I wanted to do everything I could to, to not feel disabled, so I jumped all over the place and <laughs> climbed up the lighting trestles. And, uh, I think it was a good, uh, actually a good thing, because uh, it got me working harder. And now I can actually move a foot in each direction. <laughs> <laughs> How do you feel about the record companies exploiting the, this Seattle thing? Do, do you think it, it's a temporary thing? Yeah, I think I think the whole Seattle scene, the big boom of bands out of Seattle, is a temporary thing. I don't, I don't think that you'll see a, you know a whole bunch more bands come from Seattle. Maybe a few more, but um, I think people will start looking in other other places. Kind of opened everything up, though. It's not like everybody's going to L.A. and New York anymore, you know? Right. If you're a big fish in a small pond, the record companies see that more now than if you're just stuck in L.A. And the Comparing the Seattle scene to the L.A. scene, it seems like the L.A. scene, a band will get together and they'll play a few gigs and the record company will sign them prematurely and when they're not ready for it yet, you know? And um, there's no real scene developing like in L.A. or New York, I think, you know? Except for the hardcore underground scene in New York, you know, but... In Seattle, these bands played together for years and years and developed and really grew together. And, and the songs reflect that, I think. Their songs are really good songs, valid songs, you know. And I think that if a band, you know, if a hundred ba more bands come out of Seattle and they're good bands, and that's all much better for the industry as opposed to, you know, signing all these, these glam, uh, let's say, <laughs> these glam <laughs> bands that, you know, can't play their instruments and stuff, you know. But, um, you know, music's music, and it's just good to see some good stuff coming out now as opposed to this other crap, you know, we've been living with for the past ten years, you know. But how did James made a record deal with a major label long before this uh, uh, boom even started, or at least Nirvana broke through? So I'm, I'm, you weren't, in any case, a typical sub-pop band. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, so uh, you were like a, aiming for that major label contract, or was it more like that uh, you just were given the opportunity? Oh, yeah, we were given the opportunity. I th I, of course, uh, you know, we would dream about that and, and think about it and talk about it and get excited about the idea of, of um, being on a major label and selling a lot of records, but realistically, I think our goals never really exceeded um, just being a big Seattle band. We wanted to be big in the clubs in Seattle, you know, and that, that was as far as our dreams went until we were approached and then, um, you know, then we, we, were, we were happy with it and we were ready for it by that time. Have you noticed that America has changed maybe dramatically now when Will, I believe Bill Clinton became a president? I haven't been home since Bill Clinton became yeah. president. Yeah. He's going to play saxophone on the next record, though. So. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be kind of interesting to see how that all turns out. You know, I, I think, I think everybody's, I think the population is a lot more aware of their government and that they have a voice in it. You know, that's the last 12 years have been pretty shitty. You know, as far as like, you know, the leadership that we had in the states. So, you know, I think everybody's kind of excited, looking for something to happen, but, you know, I mean, it's not going to happen overnight. Just kind of wait and see what goes down, you know. What did you think about his campaign, which aimed at young voters? I think it was killer. Very good. Got people up and awake, and, you know, a ton, ton of young people registered and voted and saw what, saw what was going down and made a choice. So, so that was a really good thing, you know. Yeah, I think that's some biggest turnout for the that age group, you know, the my age group and younger, you know, that has gone down in a long time. You know. What is the sweetest thing in stardom? What's that? <coughs> I'm sorry. Uh, what is the sweetest thing in stardom? Stardom? <coughs> yeah. 
Hey, this whole rock star thing's all in your head. It's just a joke, you know. We don't take it seriously. I think that's why it works, you know. I mean, if you take it too, I see all these guys getting caught up in it, you know. And it's just a, a waste of time. It's real childish to me, really, you know. Just stardom thing, you know. We're just who we are, basically. Um, get a lot of free drinks, though. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. A lot of free drinks works. and uh, a lot of girls to uh, conversate with. But probably, probably <laughs> appears you know, a lot different from, from the outside. I mean, from, from within our little camp, you know, we don't really see, see it. We don't see us the way maybe other people see us or, or envision us um, being. It's kind of a big lap to us from the inside. It's the you same know? thing. It's like even before any of us were signed, was the, the uh, four guys in, in a room just learned, to, you know, doing songs and making music, you know, same thing, you know. I felt more like a rock star when I was 16 yeah, playing my first show in the the true. high school cafeteria. So. <laughs> you have said that you don't want to be a part of any trend because trends always die. How can you avoid being in? They keep just doing the same thing we're doing, you know. They're just keep yeah, moving they're faster than the trends. Exactly. <laughs> so you show what the trends are. Uh, I like like we, like we said uh, that's not really a big concern you know I mean uh, the I, I I would have to give the success of the music that that we've written and what we've done to to a lot of good work by us and also a lot of people who've supported it you know people who who want to listen to it so and I think it, I think in that respect you know whatever whatever the mood shifts to in the press about the Seattle scene or whatever in the future years I think the people who uh, bought our albums and uh, we'll continue to buy them in the future if, if we keep giving them music that's worth listening to, you know, and hopefully we can keep doing that. Do you feel comfortable making videos? Many bands don't like them. No. <laughs> they feel they are better alive. They're a pain in the ass. Yeah. yeah. I'm not an actor, but I play one on TV. <laughs> <laughs> Your last question, please. So what are your plans out of this tour? And, 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 uh, We'll, uh, we'll finish this tour on, and go home on the 8th of March, uh, take a couple weeks off, and then do another United States tour for about a month, and then come back from Metallica. And uh, there may be an, another, another possibility for us to, to uh, do another States tour. Uh, we'll probably be going until around September, I'd say, of uh, 94, or 93. Okay, thank you everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, sure. Right there? <clears throat> what, what do I do? You're watching more of this? Yes. This is Lane from Alice in Chains. Is this thing on? And you're watching more of this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. More of this, more okay. of that, more of this, more of that. Please.